Hello, we are talking about Unit 11 transformations today. Um, just to give you a quick overview of the unit and give you some things to go ahead and try to study. So it's Unit 11 transformations. Sorry, on number one. <clears throat> it says the vertices of triangle ABC are A, B, and C. What are the coordinates of the image after the 90 degree rotation? As I've mentioned several times, first, you're trying to find the image of the coordinates of the image. So you're trying to find the A prime, the B prime, and the C prime. Now, as I've mentioned, some of you could remember the rule. I, again, don't remember the rule. So I'm going to go through how I would perform the rotation. So I'm going to plot my points first. So now I'm going to take this figure, I didn't do a good job connecting those points, but that's okay. So now I'm going to take this figure and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to rotate it 90 degrees. Now again, it doesn't tell me the direction, so if it doesn't tell me the direction, what direction do we always go? Correct. The standard direction is counterclockwise because that's how a grid is drawn. So it's counterclockwise unless noted a different way. So when I go to rotate this figure, it's going to move, it's 90 degrees, so it's going to move from whatever's sitting in this quadrant, it's going to move here. A 90 degree rotation is by quadrant. So here, as I said before, I like to, to image it off of an axis. So A lines up with 3, so I'm going to come over here to 3. It's 2 up, it moved 1 quadrant to A prime. C is right on the axis, so when it moves here, C prime is right on the axis. We're at negative 3, so 1 quadrant would be positive 3. It's 1 above, it's 1 above, there's my B prime. Now again, this question does not ask us for the picture. It asks us for the quadrant. So, it, I'm sorry, it asks us for the ordered pair. So that's negative 3, 2. That's 3, 1, and C is 0, 3. Okay, on number 2, it's asking us the value of X. So I have an X here, I have an X here, and I've got some other things in other places. All right, so what's kind of really going on in this picture is who is my corresponding parts? Who makes things congruent? And if it's a rotation of 160 degrees, it means nothing except for that the rotation is isometric. Because the rotation is isometric, that means all of my pieces stay congruent. So I know that, sorry, that this piece here, my 3x minus 6, is congruent to my 3y over here. I know that my 4x plus 3 is congruent when it rotates to the 2x plus 7. The 6 right here by itself has nobody he's congruent to. So it's just to see if you know who's congruent to who. So I know that 3y equals 3x minus 6. I also know that 2x plus 7 is congruent or equal to 4x plus 3. This equation right here will give me a value for x. This one I don't need and can't do anything with. So I'm just going to solve the orange equation. Because it's a value of x, I don't have to do anything but solve my equation. I'm not doing anything else but solving my equation. All right, it's saying here the vertices J, K, L are J, K, and L. What are the coordinates of the image after the translation? So again, you could plot it and you could move it, or you could just use the rule. 
With the rule, what does the rule mean? The rule means that here, first of all, a translation is the same thing as a nickname of a slide. So I'm going to slide three in the right, and I'm going to go down two. From that, I only want the coordinate, so it never said I really had to graph it. So again, J prime, because prime is my image. Make sure you remember that. So if he's six, six plus three means my new, my new X is going to be at nine. Two minus two means my new Y is going to be at zero. You just take the ordered pair and shove in X for X and Y for Y, and you can mathematically solve it as well. So for K, negative 3 plus 3 is 0, 1 minus 2, negative 1. And for L, 4 plus 3 is 7, negative 2 minus 2 is negative 4. I do not have to graph it, it's only asking me for the coordinates. You will find some on your test are multiple choice just asking for the coordinates. You can certainly graph them if you want to beforehand, but you do not have to. Number four does ask me to draw the image of the triangle after the tessellation. So this case, I do have to draw my image, and I do, again, need to make sure that when I draw my image that I draw, I have my, um, my primes on my image. So my first point is R. It says I want negative X and negative Y. So R prime would then be negative 1, negative 1. A number 2. So I'd be at negative 2. That's coordinate. I don't know why there's no coordinate grid here. Negative 3. Sorry, I didn't make that R prime. That's S prime. Sorry. And T and there is my image after my translation. There is my image after my translation. But I also have my coordinates to go by. All right, it says ABCD is the image of ABCD, A prime, B prime, C prime is the image, which you should know. After this translation, what's my rule? Remember, when I'm writing the rule, I have to write the beginning that says X did this, Y did this. Every rule starts with that. So with my X, what did I do to it? with my Y, what did I do to it? All right, so I'm coming from my original. I don't have to use every point. I can just use one point. I don't have to use every point, although every point would have been affected. So here, I know it's a translation, so it's a slide. So I went one to my right. I went down one, two, three, four, five. I know it's hard for you to see, sorry about that. So here, I'm going to add one in my positive direction for my X. I'm gonna go down five for my negative direction in my Y. This is my rule. You forget the beginning, your rule is not a rule. Okay, I want to determine whether this figure has a line of symmetry. If it does, how many? Remember with a line of symmetry, I can, it, it's going to come through my figure and it's going to be able to map on top of itself, which means here, if I draw this line and I fold over this hexagon, it will map on top of each other. If I draw it right here, it'll map on top of each other. If I tried to draw a diagonal, it wouldn't fit, so it has two lines of symmetry. An image and a translation are given. 
Sketch the original. Okay, we're working backwards. We want to know what A is, we want to know what B is, what C is, and what D is. Which means that what did I put into here to get this? So it's basically working backwards. So if I, if I ended at negative 3, where did I start? 0 minus 3 gave me negative 3. If I ended at 1, what did I start with? 0 plus 1 gave me 1. So my A was at the origin. So right here, where did I start to get negative 2? Well, I went blank there for a second. Sorry about that. If I started with 1, 1 minus 3 gives me negative 2. If I started to get negative 1, I'm adding 1, so negative 2 plus 1 gives me negative 1. I don't know why I'm making this harder than it is. I'm, uns I'm unclear at the moment. So on C, to get negative 4, well, negative 1 minus 3 is negative 4. Negative 6 plus 1 is negative 5. So it's just working backwards. And then here, to get negative 4, I had again negative 1. To get negative 2, I had negative 3. Negative 3 plus 1 is negative 2. And then, of course, just sketch my quadrilateral. Okay, on number eight. Number eight, I'm going to do a two part. So first thing I'm gonna do is graph my original. So my figure kinda looks like this. Now it says, okay. I want to find A double prime, B double prime, C double prime after I do the composite of transformations, which means I'm going to do a transformation, then from that result I'm going to do another transformation. So this says my first transformation is going to be a translation. So from here I'm going to go down 4, left 3. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3. That's A prime. One. 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, D prime, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, B prime, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, C prime, here, here, there is my translation. Now I want to do my reflection. My reflection across the X means that here is my X axis it now will be on the other side. And again, you could use the rule for these or you could graph them. So A double prime, because it wants the coordinates, And again, this could be a multiple choice, choice question that just says, where, where are my coordinates after my composition of transformations? And it could be a multiple choice question. So you need to make sure you graph it or do the rule twice. Okay, explain how shape A would reflect to shape B. Okay, if you look at it, here is my line of reflection. So it's just a reflection on the Y. On, actually, it's a cross. Reflected across the y axis. Number 10, how many lines of symmetry does this shape have? Well, first of all, it's an octagon. It looks regular. So if I cut it in half here, it'll fold on top of each other. Two, three, 
4. Looking at the figure, I believe he maps on himself as well because he's even this way, back at my each vertice. I think each vertice maps as well. Oops, I think I already did that one. I think I did too many lines. So it would have been the four lines. I think he maps eight times. So he has eight lines of symmetry. Each for the angle and each in half, each in between the piece as well. So he has eight times, so he has eight lines of symmetry. You have each vertice. And then um, the middle of each middle of each side. And it's because he's even, so he'll map completely on top of himself. Okay, I want to find the scale factor and tell whether it's a dilation or a reflection. So to find my scale factor, I first have to realize who is my image, who is my regular. So my regular is looking like, here's my regular P. My image is looking like he's P prime. So my regular image, just so we're looking at the right image, because it's got things drawn. Here is my image. I'm sorry, there's my regular, sorry, there's my first image. The red is my dilation. So if I'm going from smaller to larger, he's an enlargement. We know when we're finding the scale, it's always the image over the original. And we're talking about corresponding sides. So my image is 12.5 over my original, which is 5. My image is y over my original, which is 4. My image is x over my original, which is 8. So he is the only one I can get the scale factor from. Now, scale factors don't involve scale factors don't involve decimals. So I'm going to divide it, and then I'm going to say, hey, I want math enter enter. So my scale is five halves, and it should be larger than one because I enlarged him. And last but not least, I just want to quickly go over, the. you need to know theorem 9.5 and 9.6. There's a question about each. What you need to know is that when I have the parallel lines, I have an image here that's reflected and then reflected again over parallel lines that the distance between the parallel lines, um, the distance, the total distance, sorry, the total distance from trans, and it looks like a translation, the total distance is two times the distance of between the parallel lines. Which is the same thing that this theorem 9-6 is saying. Now I have intersecting lines, and I basically, and this is going to look like, sorry, backing vote up, 9-5, it looks like a translation. Here I have an image, I'm reflecting it here, and then I'm reflecting it again. So it looks like a rotation, and the angle of rotation equals two times the acute angle. So if I tell you that this angle is 80 degrees, then the whole rotation is two times the acute angle, which is then 160 degrees. It's knowing those two theorems. You also have to know the reflection for y equals x, y equals negative x, and like an x equals 2. All of those types of reflections you'll probably have to do. Short and sweet, it's just kind of a tidbit of what's going on. Hope you have a great day.